Here's a five year review of this trailer, my boat trailer. And this is a gateway trailer with uh, dual axle, brakes on, all wheels. It has electric over hydraulic brakes. And uh, you know, that's probably the important features on this. Now, and it is a 10,000 pound trailer, so it's somewhat overbuilt for this uh, 21 foot boat. I doubt it, with the trailer and the boat, I doubt I've really loaded it much above 6,000, well, maybe, maybe a little over 6,000 pounds total, so it's definitely not overloaded. And uh, here you can see uh, where this, the uh, spare tire holder cracked, and I had to weld it there. And you can see the same effect here where I had to weld, weld it across here. And then I added this gusset so that it wouldn't just break again. And uh, th this, this failure or, or crack is not unique to me. I have several friends that have the, the same problem on the same uh, hanger on basically the exact same trailer. Here is the tread on what is now the spare tire. So uh, the, the most I've driven this uh, trailer, the absolute most that it's been pulled is 20,000 miles. Uh, a more reasonable guess would be maybe 14,000 miles is probably about what it did, but let's just work with a 20,000 mile number. So I, I used up the spare and then the, the tire that, re, that uh, it was replacing was worn about uh, like this, you know, so you can see that the tread on this side is pretty much gone. Uh, there's still some on this side. So I used up the spare and replaced four additional tires. So all together, uh, this trailer has gone through five tires uh, to get 20,000 miles. And now it has um, um, uh, maybe half the tread gone on uh, the remaining tires. So I put Goodyear Endurance on, on the wheel that was uh, wearing badly. So this one has actually been replaced twice. So the fact that one is being replaced far more frequently than the others uh, indicates that it's uh, really not the tires that are to blame. You know, certainly tire quality will have an effect, uh, but there has to be a, some sort of alignment issue either in the, the frame or the, uh, the axle. Uh, this, these are torsion axles, uh, so they behave differently than axles that have leaf springs. And it has these so-called vault hubs. And it says, hybrid oil, no service required. That's quite an interesting statement. Uh, so exactly what are they referring to that requires no service? I don't know. So I, I, I really can't comment on, on what that means, no service required. I can't think of any mechanical thing really uh, that through its life requires no service. So there's probably some caveat on that, but um, I, I don't know what that is. So here's another look at one of these hub caps. You can see it's a spring-loaded thing, uh, sort of like a bearing buddy, but, but also different. Um, the bearing buddy has a soft cap that goes over this cap, and then uh, uh, you, you grease the end of the, uh, the spring-loaded thing in that. With, uh, with these vault hubs, if you want to, uh, to grease it, then you have to knock this cap off, and then in the end of the uh, spindle, you install one of these greasers and, and then grease it and then greasing is uh, effectively the same as an easy loop hub where you grease from one end and then there's a hole in the other end of the hub, grease comes out there uh, next to the, to the seal and then you can fill that whole cavity with grease. And although this says hybrid oil, uh, when, when you uh, get this stuff, it actually appears to be a grease and you uh, dispense it just as you would uh, a normal grease. But then my understanding is when it heats up, it turns into an oil at a relatively low temperature. The idea is that the bearings then remain better greased. So at the five year mark, uh, I, I, I replaced these guys. All of these spring loaded things were stuck out and I had to smack them with a hammer to get them to move. So that feature of uh, being spring-loaded is, is not very uh, durable. And when I knocked these guys off, two of the, uh, the hubs were filled primarily with water. There was very little grease inside or oil. 
So again, this suggestion that uh, no service is required is, is definitely an, an interesting statement. Um, maybe there is something that doesn't require service, but w one of the main wear items on, on any trailer is the seal. And if you have your hybrid oil heating up and turning into oil rather than grease, then it will just run out through that seal if the seal has failed. In this case, uh, I saw that two definitely had, and it, it turns out the other two also had failed, but I had replaced those at the four-year mark. And I was made aware that they had failed because I was standing in a parking lot talking to a buddy, and he just happened to notice, oh, look, there's a grease splatter on, on your wheel. Looks like your uh, seal has failed. And that kind of put the damper on the, the, the nice conversation we were having, and so I, I ended up spending the, 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 uh, the next day uh, dealing with this in the middle of my vacation. So now we'll look at the brakes. And I decided to look at the brakes specifically because I heard a scraping sound on them. And so you can see that there's no brake pad at all left on this one. Uh, you know, the 20,000 miles that I drove this was almost all highway and freeway driving. I was not driving my boat to the grocery store for groceries. I was doing very little braking. So this one, one side is pretty much gone. The other one is starting to show a little bit of wear. This one, um, pretty much gone. This one still has a little tiny bit and a little bit of wear there. And this one is just starting to, to go un unevenly, uh, but uh, this one is basically as new. Uh, all, all of these, uh, one side is almost as new and, and only one side is showing wear. That implies that the, uh, the disc brake is, is sticking. So the caliper is not sliding well on, on the pins and, uh, and it's sticking. So all of this problem uh, is caused by sticking in the caliper. There, you know, there's not a problem with these brake pads. These little caps for the bleed screws are, well, you can see there, they were still on, uh, but, well, three of them were still on, but you can see those are, are pretty much shot. And uh, just for a size comparison, This is a, a brake pad for an F-250 and, and this is a brake pad for a 10,000 pound trailer. So you, so you can see that this is a bit smaller. So my plan going forward with all of this is to lube the brakes once a year and, and see if that will keep them from, from sticking and, and, and wearing down um, just the backer plate. And also not take this advice and instead treat the hubs just as a, a regular hub. And I, I converted all of these from the hybrid oil just to a, a, a normal grease. And then I can treat it as a, an easy lube hub just by packing around one of these grease certs and, and then greasing it just like normal with uh, just normal grease. And you know, I thought about installing these permanently on the end of the spindle and I figured no, no matter what I did there, I, I, it would be really difficult to clean out those threads completely to get this to stay. So if it fell out while driving down the road, that would be really, really bad. Uh, so I just decided, well, I'll just uh, install and uninstall this dessert each, each time I need it. These caps are, are certainly interesting, but um, uh, you could make do very easily with just a, a, a cap that, you know, you tap in and then just make sure that whole cavity is full of grease. You know, you don't don't need these really. And, and the fact that they were all sticking, you know, that's not, that's not really encouraging. So to reiterate, I will be greasing the calipers frequently to make sure this uneven wear doesn't happen. And I will treat this, the, the hub, not as a, uh, a hybrid oil hub, but instead just as a normal grease hub and as an easy lube hub with just normal grease in it. And I will t attend to that annually. A possibility on why a couple of the hubs were mostly full of water and had no grease slash oil left is that the brakes were heating up because they were stuck. And then because the brakes were heating up, the oil also heated up, or grease heated up, turned to oil, and then ran out the seal. So the seals may not have been failed particularly badly. Uh, and, and if it had just been grease in there instead of oil, 
then maybe everything would have been fine and the hub would not have filled with water. Uh, but, you know, that's just speculation. But a good way to uh, have to not worry about this is just go with standard grease and then uh, treat it like it's just a, a normal hub that's being dipped in water all the time. So you, uh, you have to tend to it you know, annually or maybe more. If you use it a lot or particularly if you back it in the water a lot or, you know, like, like me, I, I tend to leave the trailer in the water quite, for quite a period of time each time I back it in because I back it in then I deal with everything, including the back in the boat off the trailer, go and park it somewhere, then run back to the truck and then pull the, uh, the trailer out of the water. So it'll be in the, the water for five minutes easily. There are other people, you know, if you have a, a two-person team, then it can be really fast. Uh, basically, you back it in, fire up the engine, back to the boat off the trailer, and, and then pull the trailer out of the water. So it can be really quick. Uh, with me, typically it's not. So because my uh, trailer is in the water for a bit longer, then it will have more of a tendency to fill with water if there's any problem with the seal, which is likely. And here's a tube of that oil. And you can see that it says, again, the vault, hybrid oil, no service required. What does that even mean? I just can't think of it. Um, pretty much everything needs service. I mean, unless you just say, well, you have some oil here and you don't have to service it. But if it, like, leaks out and you have to add some, um, I just don't know what that means. You know, if water gets in there, then there's water in there. Hmm. No service required. An interesting thing about these vault hubs is they have a five-year warranty. Uh, but that's a, a parts-only warranty. So, what's that really worth? Well, for me, when I had a seal go bad, then uh, I just had to take care of business. I couldn't wait around for them to approve my, my work on, on the parts, because that's what the warranty says. You know, you have to get approval before you proceed. Are you going to wait for approval on, say, you know, $100 of parts or something like that when you're in the middle of your vacation? No, you're not. You're just going to take care of business. You're just going to take care of business. So what value does the warranty really have? For me, it really doesn't have any value at all. What I want is something that I don't have to worry about. And uh, generally something that I don't have to worry about is something that I maintain frequently. So here we're looking at the axle hanger. So the, the axle bolts here and here to the trailer frame. And you can see there's a crack right here. Yeah, right in there, there's a crack. And that propagates up about an inch uh, behind this, this piece here. You can't really see it from the other side very well, you know, with the camera. Uh, but yeah, it's about an inch long, that crack. And all four of the hangers have a crack right there in that place. So, so that's actually a crack on the axle component. Uh, but, you know, why it cracked, of course, is another good, uh, another question. And why all four would crack is a, is a good question, too. My plan in the future is to inspect this regularly and see if it propagates further. Uh, so far, it looks like it, it's pretty stable. Otherwise, I don't see any uh, cracks or failures on the frame. The galvanizing seems to be holding up very well, so there's no rust on it. Uh, the lights are still working just fine. Here you can see where I hit some debris on the freeway. That kind of smashed that. That's my fault. Um, the plastic on the trailer, you know, for the bow. Well, here's, here you can see the, the chine cap on the on the boat is cutting into that, which is, well, kind of expected. That's just normal. And uh, these guys are, are holding up pretty well, you know, so I, I don't see a problem there. And here's a smash light, too. Uh, somebody did that to me while I was in a parking lot, so that's not my fault. So as you can guess, you know, my opinion is that this certainly can be better. And, uh, you know, if I were to build my own boat, for example, and I was going to, uh, decide what to do about a trailer, well, you know, I guess I might just build my own trailer. And if I was in the market for a new boat, 
then I would probably give extra consideration to a manufacturer who builds his own trailers. Okay, so here you can see that I installed their grease zerk in the end. It's just a regular old zerk. And then uh, there's a grease gun. And I can't squeeze the gun and run the camera and point my finger all at the same time, so you'll have to believe me. And uh, so here there is a little hole back here. I, it's, it was too small, I overlooked it. So that's where grease squirts out. Then uh, it's squirting out on this side of the seal, and so then you can just fill this whole cavity with grease until it comes squirting out just like on an Easy Lube Hub. And to determine whether your <coughs> seal is leaking, uh, sometimes you're lucky enough or unlucky enough or whatever that it leaks really fast and splatters on the on the wheel itself and if you got a spoked wheel then you can see it uh, you know just walk by the trailer and oops or your friend will notice or something like that but uh, sometimes it just kind of oozes out and then it mixes with the dust from the road and grime and stuff and you got all this s stuff in here so I, I just scraped this out from inside of here and uh, as you can see it's a big pile so that's what you need to look for is this glop like this stuck so you got to crawl under the trailer and take a look. So this caliper slides back and forth on these pins in this bracket. And if pins become unlubricated, they might stick. So put some grease inside of here. And you get this uh, brake system grease. Uh, extreme temperature stuff. And it mentions pins on here. And these little rubber guys, it turns out there's a cap right here. So this is rubber. And this end thing is sort of a plastic cap and uh, maybe it keeps water out. But now when you dunk your boat, you're going to get water inside those pins and they're going to tend to want to stick. That's just the way it is. So you probably have to get in there and grease this uh, frequently, like, you know, maybe once a year or, you know, whatever works. And on this caliper, we only had one plug. And both of them on the inside are equally just packed full of dirt, so it looks like the plugs don't really help that much. So these things are just going to bind up. Let's take a look at what's possible when you don't know anything. When you don't know jack shit about welding or making trailers or anything like that. This was actually my first welding project. I didn't know anything. I didn't know what a welder was. I barely knew what a trailer was. I didn't know what springs were or suspensions or anything like that. This is the first welding project I ever built. It is a trailer and it satisfies all the requirements of a trailer. The lights work, the brakes work, the wheels are round, the trailer does not make bald tires. No, yeah, I'll repeat that. The trailer does not make bald tires. They age out. They do not wear out. It's a 10,000 pound trailer with slipper springs. It has wood fenders. I had to place these, replace the wood fenders once only because I let a 500 pound fat guy stand on them, so they broke. But if I hadn't done that, I never would have had to replace them. In the 20 years of this trailer's life, the brakes still work fine. There's no cracks in frame. All the steel I bought secondhand from Army Surplus. I did have to replace the wood on this back thing here once in the 20 years. So there you go, it's a perfectly functioning trailer. It's been subject to all sorts of abuses. Heavy equipment sitting on it, hauling logs, firewood, building supplies, you name it. And the tires do not wear out. They age out, even though I put a lot of miles on it.